<laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Fifteen minutes of fame only lasts about two minutes, man. Okay, so uh, welcome to the Vienna Wireless Society pregame show. We're going to have a wonderful discussion tonight ab ab about questions. It's the question corral, questions that will be interesting to people who are brand new to amateur radio and even to the old Fs that I just talked about a little while ago who know everything. There's still stuff to learn. And Harry, K3NF, is going to lead that discussion. Take it away, Harry. Okay. This is Question Corral. If it goes well, we'll continue it. If you boo me off the stage, we'll end it tonight. Okay, let me tell you the rules. This is not a multiple choice or be the first to shout out the answer contest. The moderator, whoever that will be, will provide background and ask a question. You raise your hand. The moderator may or may not call on you. If called on, you must correctly answer the question provide detail, and answer any follow-up questions from the audience or the moderator. In short, you can't guess and you need to know something about what you're talking about. If the answer is incorrect or incomplete, as determined by the moderator, the moderator will move to another responding member. In the event questions remain unanswered or there are repeated incorrect or erroneous answers, the moderator may defer to he or to whoever he or she determines to be a subject matter expert. The moderator reserves the right to not call on people because they are deemed to be subject matter experts. Any resemblance to actual persons, club members, or actual events is purely coincidental. Google is not permitted. Quibbling will be limited to no more than 10 seconds per question. Members can loudly voice their discontent with the answers and may present opposing views, provided such views are factually based and referenced. Rules may change without notice, and the decision of the moderator is final. Any questions about the question corral? Who's the moderator? Who's the moderator? Okay, question one. Jim receives his new ICOM 7300 via FedEx. He realizes he needs a power supply for the radio. He goes online to buy one and sees an MFJ 4125 Mighty Light 25 amp switching power supply for $79. He also sees an Astron RS20A 20 amp linear power supply for $119. Jim doesn't own a linear, so he buys the MFJ and saves money. What is the difference between a switching power supply and a linear power supply? That's been rectified from uh, incoming power line. Uh, through an inductor, okay, we'll try it this way. Uh, it, uh, it interrupts the uh, DC that's been rectified from the uh, AC line, sending pulses. The width of the pulses uh, approximate the uh, power, you know, the pulses are still high, fairly high voltage, but with the narrow width, uh, they generate uh, effectively the power that you or, or voltage that you want especially if you're going in through an inductor into a capacitor uh, the linear power supply simply has uh, usually a transformer rectifier uh, filter capacitors and may or may not have a rect a regulator circuit as well but the regulator circuit just uh, generates heat in a linear supply a lot more than in a switching, which is either switched all the way on, so very little voltage across the transistor, or all the way off, so very little current, and therefore very little wattage and very little heat. Which is better? Uh, it sounds like I wrote that question, but I didn't. 
Um, the reason I feel that way is that I just went through exactly that same situation. I bought an ICOM 7300 a few months ago and a power supply. And the little bit of research that I did, and my ignorance level is higher than I'm comfortable with, the basic consideration was that the switching power supply can tend to generate more noise. Uh, and the linear power supply uh, is less noisy. And the recommendation of the uh, uh, responses that I saw, the reviews, said that in general, if you can afford it, buy the linear power supply because you'll be happier with it. So <clears throat> why do 75% of the people sitting in this room have switching power supplies? Especially since if you want to heat your shack, you need to get a linear power supply, right? Any answers to why 75% of the people have a switching power supply? The, the answer given was uh, by Ralph, it was cheaper, smaller, and lighter. That's his answer. Okay, any follow-up questions on linear versus switching? Okay, <clears throat> keep your eye on a P. Bill gets his new ICOM ID 51A plus 2 digital voice HT with an SMA antenna and is enjoying learning all the new features. However, Bill is having a problem hitting the VWS repeaters and feels he needs a better antenna. He runs into Mike who says, you really have a nice HT. I have a brand new in the package 15 inch SMA antenna that I bought on eBay and plan to use with my Baofeng. But the Baofeng died and I don't need it anymore. It has 6 dB gain on 2 meters and you can have it. Bill believes this is a great deal for an SMA antenna and is just what he needs. What questions should Bill ask Mike? No, you can't answer. You're the subject matter expert. What kind of connector does it have? Both have an SMA connector. An SMA connector on the antenna that Mike has for his Baofeng and an SMA uh, antenna on the ICOM ID51. You might be on to something. Keep Just going. Kevin? Yeah, mail you tell me. Or in reverse. So the question you should ask is male or female? <coughs> Explain some more. <coughs> I believe the Baofeng is something that's different. From most of the other reasons. Yeah. Joe's nodding his head. What's he talking about, Joe? I don't I recognize most of these words are English, but I really don't know. <laughs> okay, anybody else? You want to You're the subject matter expert. What on the connector? What's the difference? The difference on the Bofang? Bofang ICOM SMA, two SMA and the Baofang, the radio itself has a male connector. The other, like my ICOM, right. has a female BNC and other companies use female B, uh, SMAs, but not Baofeng. Baofeng's, so the problem with it is that when every time you screw the antenna on and off, you are damaging the center conductor. Keep that in mind. But will the antenna Mike has fit on the ID51? I'd have to see it. It's a Baofeng antenna. No, okay. Probably not. Any more follow-up on that question? So he needs to go to uh, RF connection and buy an adapter. Or you can buy an antenna that fits the radio. Or you can buy an antenna. Did you have a comment in for ZH? It does. It's a super. Mike got it on eBay, and that's what it was advertised. <laughs> it's 15 inches. That's why he bought it. It was 6 dBs. That's right. Audience can. They can quibble. That's right. Okay. That's okay. It's your opinion. <laughs> All right. Question three. If you've been licensed for less than four years, you may not even understand why this is a question. What is the difference between a dongle and a hotspot? A dongle and a hotspot. 
I'm looking for an answer. <laughs> that have to be right. Yeah. Uh, but you have to be ready right for follow-on questions. Yeah. A, a dongle uh, interfaces directly to a PC, typically through a USB port, and it uh, you don't need a radio whatsoever to operate it. So it's kind of like using Skype on your uh, um, computer, but essentially you, for DSTAR anyway, the uh, the dongle, you register online and get an ID, and then when you connect using the dongle, you uh, are connected through their hierarchy of the internet, through talk groups and uh, reflectors, I guess they call them in DSTAR, and so essentially you can connect to reflectors, which are kind of like talk groups in DMR, or you can connect to repeaters, and you don't use a radio whatsoever. With a hotspot, a hotspot is an intermediary or intermedia between your computer and your radio. So you talk to your radio on RF to the hotspot, and then the hotspot typically connects through Wi-Fi to uh, the internet. So okay. Follow-on questions? Okay, this is an old ham question. If you're licensed in the last 10 years, you may not understand the question. If you've been licensed for over, licensed for over 40 years, you will not understand why this is a question. <laughs> That's opposed to the dongle and the hotspot. <clears throat> Jim's radio club has a 10 meter tube night once a month. Jim has an FT-991A and a 40 meter dipole, but he wants to join the dent. Jim goes to the Berryville Ham Fest and purchases a fully restored, fully painted Viking Valiant 2 transmitter. He will be king of the tube night with his new transmitter and his FT-991A as his receiver. Jim takes his new transmitter home and tests it. It loads up into his antenna. Everything works perfectly. Tube night arrives. Jim tunes in the net control and has his Johnson Viking Valiant warmed up and ready to go. Jim then realizes he can't check into the net. Why not? You have one. Who said something? Gary? Got to figure out some way to mute, mute, mute his 991 before he blows it up. What do you mean? What do you mean mute? Can he just turn down the volume? No, turn off the RF gain. He's got to get the RF gain down out of that receiver before he blows up the front end. Nah, it's not. It's not the correct answer. It's a partial answer. It's not the correct answer. I'm not familiar with the particular rig, but I would uh, probably surmise that the older rig being FM only and no sideband, single nope. sideband. No, nope, nope, side not the correct answer. He has a Viking Valiant, and he has an FT-991A, and he turns the FT-991A and is listening to the net control. Kevin. What, what kind of a switch? A coaxial switch. What is a coaxial switch? They switch it and it switches 50 ohms. A to B. You use coax with it. So <laughs> what, what he's saying is uh, it's a switch that switches 50 ohm coax from one coax to another. Is that right, Kevin? Knife and why, what would you do with a knife switch? So one answer was a knife switch. What would you do with a knife switch? Transmit and receive. Transmit, receive. So the knife switch to transmit and receive? Right. So he can receive on the 991A, but he has no antenna connected to his uh, Valiant. So he's got to throw this knife switch so he can, send the, so he can transmit out to the antenna. Why doesn't he need that with his FT-991A? There you go. It's included. Okay. It's because it's a transceiver. All right. Next question. Bill attended the VWS presentation on mobile operating. He has his Baofeng HT and a mag mount antenna with a PL-259 connector on the coax. What does he need to connect his antenna to his HT? 
He did for me. Short of that, what else did you need? <laughs> yeah. Any other comment? We got a PL 259 going to a bow fact. What's he need? PR switch? Uh, try a pair of dikes to cut off the PL 259 <laughs> and get, get a uh, appropriate uh, connector to match the uh, bow fang and it will fit the coax in question uh, so that they, they can be directly connected. Or he could, John? Pardon my French, he needs an adapter. There you go. <laughs> so it would be, what would it be on one end of the adapter? SO239. Right, to what? Female SMA. There you go. Okay, Lynn is really upset at a recent meeting, and Sam asks her why. Lynn, re Lynn recounts that she had 43 states confirmed on Logbook of the World, but recently got a new vanity call sign and now has to start worked all states all over again. Sam says that's too bad, but ARRL has to make money somehow. Is there anything Lynn can do? Just register your old call. And how do you do that? I forgot. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> so the answer, the answer given was you just register the old call. Now who knows how to do that? Go ahead. When you get your certificate, you put down all the calls that you want associated with that certificate for LOTW. And what will happen when she logs in with the new call sign and looks at the work all states but all the ones that she had will get will be credited. Okay. Any other questions on that? Log book work question? Okay. Jim White Howard's presentation on mobile operating. He went to the Berryville Ham Fest looking to purchase a good mobile antenna for HF. Jim realized that he needed a good mount as well. Like Howard, he wanted one to hold his antenna while driving at 60 miles an hour. Jim saw three mounts, a 3 8 by 24, a UHF, and an NMO. He wanted to operate on 40 meters, so he figured he couldn't use the UHF mount. What is the difference in these mounts? UHF, 3 8 by 24, and NMO. What is the 3 8 by 24 connected to? It's just the mount. It's the mount. Could be a lip mount, could be a mag mount. There's three mounts. Okay. 3 8 by 24, NMO, UHF. Will the handle and load is the wind loading out of town? Could. Depends on what mount, what his antenna connector is. Well, the uh, NMO and the UHF mounts are for VHF stuff. VHF stuff in the in the three eighths would be he could plug in a vertical <coughs> or whatever on that. But what would the physical difference between the different types of mounts be? What's a UHF mount look like? Yeah, SO 239. So you would screw in an antenna with a PL 259 base, right? Right. right. What about a 3 8 by 24? That would have to be mounted in a in a, a hole in a in a vehicle someplace, and then screw the right thing on. And what's an NMO mount kind of look like? It's typically like Motorola. It's a Got eight big round threads on it. Thread it on. So, if we have a mount, this is a certain type, does the mount have to match the antenna? UHF to UHF? <laughs> okay. Uh, Bill works an ATNODX station. Bill looks the station up on QRZ. He sees that the station requires three green stamps. Bill is confused because Sperry and Hutchinson, who owned SNH green stamps, went out of business in the 1980s. 
What is this all about? Many times I've asked for green stamps myself. A green stamp is a dollar bill, preferably crisp, uncirculated, to cover the postage and handling of the other end. Okay. Fred just bought a used bow fang. A any other questions about green stamps? Everybody know what an ATNO is? Anybody not know what an ATNO is? I don't. All time new one. You did, you've got several of those recently. So all your 44th worked all state would be an ATNO. <laughs> okay, Fred just bought a used bow fang. His friend told him about the Vienna Wireless Society two-meter net on Monday nights. He tuned his radio to 146-685, and even though he lives across the street from the repeater, nobody heard him. What did Fred do wrong? Um, I think I have an answer, Carter. He didn't have an offset. It said programmed into his ball funk, so he was transmitting on the frequency that, uh, that everybody listens to, but the repeater doesn't listen to that frequency. So what is an offset? What does that mean? So in two meters, it's 600 uh, kilohertz, and it means that you, that's a way, one way that a repeater can, can operate with one antenna receiving and transmitting the same at the same time. So every frequency on two meters is 600 offset? No, no, no. There are a lot of frequencies that are used that are simplex, where you transmit and receive on the same frequency. But for repeaters, they have to, they have, to have an offset frequency for their reception. What about plus or minus? What's that mean? What about plus or minus? The one in our repeater is negative. So the offset can either be higher frequency than the, than the frequency that's advertised or lower. And for the VWS repeater, you listen on... 146? 685. And you transmit on? 146.085. Okay. Any questions? All right. It's only on the two meter repeater. No. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see here. Al has a telescoping adjustable 40 meter antenna. He set it up and tests the SWR at various frequencies on the band using the SWR meters that you'll see up here. At 7.000 on the CW end, his SWR is perfect. It's one to one. At 7300, 7.300 at the top of the band, the SWR is four to one. Al wants to optimize the antenna for 7200 in the single sideband portion. To get the SWR to 1, .1 to 1 at 7200, what does Sam have to do? Lengthen or shorten his antenna? Who said what? Shorten. Shorten. Why does he have to shorten? I don't understand. Higher frequency has a shorter wavelength. Okay. So if he if he was at seven, that's closer to eighty meters, and if he was at seven point two, that's closer to twenty meters. So you have to shorten it up. Okay. Did you have a, Did you want to add something? The easy way to remember that is the lower frequencies, higher mean wavelength, have longer antennas. So eighty meters has a 100 and something foot antenna, and 40 meters has a 60 foot something antenna. So the way you remember this is, if you are too low, that means you have to shorten the antenna. Questions? Okay. In the 1950s and 1960s, almost every novice had a chirp from their homemade transmitter. Today, new hams may have a chirp that they use for their HT. What are these chirps? Programming software. <laughs> are you talking about the new one or the old one? Well, I'm talking about both of them. What's the old chirp? No idea. I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> the old chirp uh, is a power supply problem. No. Usually, no. it's not going to And what's it sound like? 
Shift frequency. Shift frequency? Absolutely, that's what it is. That's not true. Okay, since we're going to talk about antennas tonight, what is the difference between an OCF, an EFHW, and a G5RV? OCF, EFHW, and G5RV. Okay, and what is an off-center fed? What does that mean? It means it's, it's, not, it's not fed directly in the center of the two elements, so the two elements are not identically or equal. So there, usually you do that in order to get some radiation from the antenna different than what a standard vertical would give you, or a dipole would give you. Okay. Well, let's say we have a quibble here. All right, let me go over it for a G5RV is a one and a half wavelength, 20 meter dipole, or double. What is it made of? A wire and coax? And a ballon. It, it wasn't part of the original design. But anyway, it's a three eighths, three half wavelength antenna, 120. It was designed for, and it happens to have World Bizoir with some other bands. So that's the. the uh, the G5RV, and that's according to the guy who developed it. But is it is it made out of number 14 wire and it can be made out 50 ohm coax? Anything, Harry. Okay. All right. EFHW, what's that? What's that mean? Uh, what's EFHW. Oh, N-fed wire. It's N-fed half wave. Well, it was traditionally called a Zeppelin antenna in the ancient days back in World War One. And it's simply an N fed resonant wire typically will have a fairly high impedance quite often fed with ladder line 600 ohm or so or with a these days with a little matching transformer that you tap down also hold on a second is there any difference between an n fed half wave and a long wire antenna good it can be yeah long wire could be Anything. It's supposed to be at least one wavelength. At least a wavelength, okay, by definition. Not necessarily have to be N fed even. Okay. So and off center fed is basically the idea behind the off center fed is it still is a resonant antenna, but you pick a feed point where the impedance is kind of about the same on several different bands, typically three hundred to six hundred ohms. So therefore, when you touch, when you match it down with a, basically an auto transformer, basically, you'll end up with something close to 50 ohms across several different bands. Because it happens to have the voltage current points work out that that impedance along the wire at that point just happens to be close to the same for several different hand bands. And that's the whole concept behind the off-center fed antenna. So <clears throat> why would a new ham, how would they decide which one of these to use? Depends on what you're trying to do. <laughs> how much area you've got, you know. What, so the off-center fed is, is a multi-band antenna generally. It doesn't really necessarily have two-to-one visoir across all the ham bands, okay? And probably should, you should run it with a tuner. The G5RV, um, I know we've had some discussion on that on the reflector lately. Uh, there's a better version of it. I think it was mentioned, the uh, a ZS6. I can't remember the other guy's, the rest of his call sign. Right. He came anyway, he came up with an improved version that has a little bit better matching characteristics. But... So if you're putting up a G5RV, don't okay. expect it to be a broadband antenna. Which one is not broadband? The G5RV really is not. Okay. Off center, the wire end fed one, it's kind of broadband because you're feeding a very high Z and you're just stepping your impedance down. So the, the variation goes down by the impedance ratio. So if you're doing a nine to one ballon, then you've got a fluctuation of a hundredth and on the other end it is only varying by one ninth of that amount. So okay. that's why it works. So can you pick one that's best? Depends what you're trying to do. 
Okay, <clears throat> Al just moved to Herndon from Seattle, Washington. He wants to know if any amateur radio operators live nearby. How can he find out? QRZ.com. What is QRZ.com? It's uh, an online, uh, uh, it's a website. website that you can go to and you can put in uh, search by call, search by uh, address. Search by zip code. You can search by just about anything that's available uh, out there that's, that has to do with the particular uh, call sign or amateur's name. And you can also put down, uh, I believe, uh, the county or uh, a location, and it'll, it'll come up with uh, a whole bunch of uh, people that are operating, licensed to operate in that area. And do you have to pay for that? No. You do have to sign up, but it's free. Okay, good. Questions on QRZ? <laughs> okay, last question. Joe just got his technician license and is eager to get on the air. His Elmer helped him put up a 13 element 2 meter beam on top of a six element six meter beam. Nice Elmer. He recently purchased a homebrew tri-band amplifier that runs 1200 watts on two and six meters and a thousand watts on ten meters. He can easily drive the amplifier with his new FT991A. Is Joe breaking any rules? <laughs> Joe's a technician, he's going to run a kilowatt on 2 and 6 meters and a kilowatt on 10 meters. Technicians are part of 10 meters, right? Yeah. I don't know, you tell me. Any kind of technique? Go ahead. If you're doing it in the technician's band, it's not legal to run a kilowatt. You're right, the technicians and it's not legal to run a kilowatt because it used to be when they first allocated that the phone privilege of 10 meters to novice they increased it from 75 to 250 but they also made it rule that no other amateur can operate more than 250 watts i don't agree with that so the the issue on the floor is a technician cannot run a kilowatt on 10 meters. That's your point? No. On 10 meters? Yeah, uh, yeah, no, they're limited to 250 watts. Uh, 200 watts, I correct myself, 200 watts, and I might add even a general or an extra cannot operate more than 200 watts in that band. I know that one because I, that, I, I, that was on my extra exam. General cannot operate, use more than 200 watts on 10 meters? No, no, in the side of the novice and technician band, they cannot run more than 200 watts. Everywhere else, they can run a kilowatt. Questions, comments? Okay. One more question or not? No, we should okay. finish unless you got one that's like the king of the hill question. Phil, Phil here's the last question. <clears throat> Phil is a newly licensed ham. His friend Al says he has to buy Ham Radio Deluxe. Phil believes he does not need the Lux package and doesn't buy it. What is Ham Radio Deluxe and why do so many people buy it? Ham Radio Deluxe. This group apparently doesn't use Ham Radio Deluxe. Well, I don't use the the paid version, I still have the version 5 and whatever that was free. But uh, yes, it's a ham radio deluxe, it controls your rig, it does a bazillion different digital modes, uh, and, uh, and it has a good logging program. And it's so it's a software program to help ham radio operators operate and, and log their contacts, is that right? Yes, and, 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 yes. and it also uh, allows you, to, yeah, give, yeah, gives you the pretty much full control of your rig from your computer and uh, it does digital work. 
Okay, should we continue? Question Corral at some future meeting or do you want to kill it right now? We can thumbs up, right. collapse up. All right, okay. there you go. Thank you very Question much. Question Corral, we'll continue. Thank you, Harry. Okay, you can shut down the video now.